I, I just want to say we're so passionate about classic movies. We're going to expand the conversation. You can see the passion that's in this room. It's thrilling to the core. Put a new spin on some vintage films. It's classic movies and more. Hi, this is Anne Marie Gaddy for Classic Movies and More, and I am so thrilled to be at the West Side Theater in New York City, sitting here getting ready to chat with Robert Creighton, who is the star and co-author of the hit musical Cagney. Yay! Right? Yay! <laughs> and I have to confess, thanks to the fine folks at uh, Cagney, I was able to see the show with my mother a couple weeks ago, and I'm happy to report that I loved it. My mother loved it. That's good news. <laughs> and I didn't only love it, I left the theater on cloud nine. I was so excited, so, my gosh, I was, I was smiling from, from ear to ear. So I had to circle back around with the Cagney folks and ask if perhaps Robert would make some time for us. So that said, here I am, here we are. Yay. And thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. I know and in a mere couple of hours, you're gonna be walking on that stage. Less than that, Cagney. an hour and a half. <laughs> I know, I can't um, believe it. Do you know what? That's the. I think the greatest thing about this whole experience and the fact that we're we're having a nice long run here at the West Side is how people feel when they walk out. Because we feel that. You feel it in the curtain call. And then when when I come out every day, I have people waiting for me, to, oftentimes, like more often than not, with tears in their eyes, saying what memories it brought back and how you know I used to watch these movies with my father. I, I had a woman the other day from California who said, I heard about this on Facebook several months ago. I got a jar, I started saving my money, flew, oh, wow. out, here, flew out here with her husband. She said, when I was a kid, 12 years old, I used to set my alarm for 2 a.m. to get up and watch Cagney films because I was wow. such a big fan. So it's, uh, it's it, that, the fact that I know people are walking out happy makes me happy. That's the best thing about well, this. Well, you should be happy. It, I'm telling you, I left theater on cloud nine. That's great so to hear. my mom, she's still talking about Can't beat that. It. Anybody who listen, she tells them. So, um, and she's a big Cagney fan, right? She's a right? huge Cagney fan. And so that's, you know, those are the people, you know, here. exactly. People right? are nervous, the big they fans, because they're like, nervous. how? Because no, let's be honest, no one's going to be James Cagney. If you want to see James, the James Cagney, you got to rent a movie. There's no one like him. Yeah. But to get to tell his story, and I look a bit like him, and, you know, the, say, can tap yeah. dance and mm -hmm. do all that. Say. But, um, uh, you know, the, the fact that people who are hardcore Cagney fans mm -hmm. are happy and just delighted that we're bringing his life, you know, bringing him back it's to life fabulous. in a way, you know? It's fabulous. I it's adore Cagney too, and I love the fact that you're doing this. I really do. I want everyone to know who Cagney is. Yeah. You know? So, you know, our fans, you know, I mean, look, our fans are classic movie fans to mm -hmm. the core, and I think a lot of classic movie fans discover these old films when they're kids. For yeah. some reason, they stumble upon them, and there's something that resonates yeah. with them really strongly, and they carry it with them mm -hmm. for the rest of their lives. So can you share a little bit with our fans of how you discovered classic movies, how they inspired you Absolutely. to become an actor? When people ask, you know, what were your, I've had lots of interviews over the years where people have asked me, you know, as a kid, what were your influences? And, you know, a lot of people, it's like certain cartoons you watch and, and that kind of thing. And sure, sure, I have some of those, but the big thing, even from a, like, I'm talking five, six, seven years old, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to be Fred Astaire. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. was my that. first guy. I I How'd you know? I just knew. I, had I wanted to be Fred Astaire. Astaire. Clearly, I'm more a Cagney type <laughs> than a Fred Astaire type, but, um, but uh, that's how I got hooked. Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly and those movies, we had VHS tap tapes. I can still picture the three when I got a little older. I had Summerstock, yeah. uh, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, and... Um, what was the other one? I guess Singing in the Rain was the other one, oh, the obvious gee. one. But, yes, huh? <laughs> but but the other two that not everybody watches, sure, Summerstock sure. and Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Summerstock with Judy Garland, you know, and this dig, 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 the potato tap dance on the table. And blah, blah. even as a kid, I would watch those things over and over. And I always wanted to be a tap dancer as a result. I never, st I took one class when I was, two classes when I was seven years old, because I wanted to, you know, I was already into watching the Fred Astaire mm -hmm. films and I want to tap dance. But I grew up in a small town in Canada and uh, I was really into hockey as well. That was my other dream, to be a hockey player. Broadway and NHL, those were my two big <laughs> dreams as a kid. And um, I, I took two classes, 
and I was the only guy in the class, and I didn't want the guys on the hockey team to find out I was taking dance class, so I quit like an idiot. Oh. Now if I could go back and say, come on, seven-year-old, oh. Robert, just stick with it, man. Who cares about the hockey team? We're glad you quit the hockey thing. Well, okay, well, we're being selfish. No, no, th I went back selfish. to hockey. Oh, you did go back to hockey? Yeah, I didn't take any more oh. dance. I didn't start oh, tap no. dancing until I was 20 years old. Oh, oh, no. no, it was fine. I mean, okay. I, I had a great childhood in Canada and played all sorts of sports and that, and sang. Okay. I was a big singer in a boys' choir. Okay. But, um, but I didn't get back to dancing till basically till I moved to New York to go to but acting school. But you did school. a lot of catching up then, huh? Oh yeah, I got obsessed with it. Really and I was always great. a sort of natural dancer, mm -hmm. and my parents mm -hmm. were beautiful. You know, our it was very part of our family, like those old movie musicals, and um, they had big dances in our town, like the charity ball and stuff. And and uh, my parent, I had four sisters, the youngest of six kids, mm -hmm. and so I learned how to dance like that. Mm -hmm. And we would watch yeah, the we'd do what we saw in the movies. And my parents were beautiful dancers together, so. So I don't know. Fun. That doesn't relate to this at all, but no, that's how really I does. my it love so of it, does. you know, because started. You're a dancer, you're a singer, yeah. you're an actor. I mean, it all goes together, and and it's great to know that it inspired you at such yeah. a young age. Those old movies, though, that was it. Yeah. I mean, those old movie musicals mm -hmm. were a big part of our family's culture, and especially yeah. mine. My, I used to watch them because I was younger than my other five siblings. My parents and I would watch them together, and that was a lot yeah. of fun. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, it's the it's great such great memories. memories. Right? Yep. Oh my gosh. So then, how did you? circle back around and, and, and kind of like get into the Cagney? Cagney. Yeah. yeah. So when I was in acting school, I had a teacher say, I was went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts here, mm -hmm. uh, classic old acting school too, where all those old movie oh, stars absolutely. went, Spencer Tracy and Grace oh Kelly gosh, and Robert Redford. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's one of the great acting schools in, in North America. And um, a teacher there said to me, you remind me of Jimmy Cagney. You kind of look like him a little bit. I know you like to tap dance on the side. They weren't crazy about my tap dancing. They want you to be really focused on the classics and on acting, but mm -hmm. which was great. Um, and uh, I started watching his films. I, I knew Yankee Doodle Dandy, but I didn't really know much else. I can tell you when I, where I was, I can picture where I was living when I started watching his films because I would, I got so excited about it. I would go, <laughs> if my blockbuster didn't have uh, or the corner video store yeah. didn't have a VHS tape. I'd like search it out and have them call and order things in. Oh. And I had a certain chair. My roommate was always gone on weekends. He was an older guy. And I would sit in this room and uh, like just really focus on it. Sometimes I'd watch it twice in a row. And I became really quickly felt connected to Cagney for some weird reason. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just, he was so magnetic as an actor on film, I think. And especially when I was an actor studying you know, you're thinking about craft all the time and thinking about being true and honest and, you know, in the moment. And that's who Cagney was in all his films, no matter how stylized they were. You believed every word out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. I think he was ahead of his time as an actor, just wonderful. And, and um, one interesting story that your, your fans might get a kick out of, in the movie Man of a Thousand Faces, mm -hmm. um, we were talking about the pronunciation of my name, C-R-E-I-G-H-T-O-N, and I always say it's Creighton, like Creighton Barrel. So Lon Chaney, you know, he plays Lon Chaney in Man of a Thousand Faces, and, and Lon, Chaney, Lon Chaney Jr. and his son uh, was named Creighton Chaney. Oh, great. His wife's name, was, maiden name was Creighton, and his son's name was Creighton Chaney. So in the movie, and this is like four or five movies into me being obsessed with James Cagney, there's James Cagney on film saying, Creighton, Creighton, <laughs> my name! It's like, oh, the, cloud, the clouds <laughs> parted, and I was like, you should do a show about James Cagney. Oh, that's so funny. So isn't that amazing? Oh, I got chills yeah. telling that story. Oh, I got chills um, too. <laughs> good, but that's how it all got started. And, and this, this show yeah. was a, uh, through a whole series of things. I had some in, involvement with his estate early on about something else, but that thing fizzled out. It wasn't a real, it was more they wanted someone to imitate Cagney and tell, like mm -hmm. read parts of biographies and stuff. Mm -hmm. But a fire got lit in me to create a story about James Cagney because once I started learning about who he was as a man mm -hmm. and how he went through the world, which you probably learned some things yep. maybe when you saw the show Absolutely. about what a humanitarian Absolutely. he was. And, and since I've been doing this, so many people have come out of the woodwork to tell me personal stories about their interaction with James Cagney. Um, like when we premiered this in Florida, we had a Q&A session after the show and a and an older gentleman stood up and said, you know, when I was in, in the war, uh, Cagney and some of his friends came to our base to do a, a USO show. It got rained out. Yeah. But Cagney spent the whole night going to every single soldier oh. in, 
in their barracks, shaking their hand oh and thanking God. them for their service. Fabulous I that. mean, so to hear that from someone who experienced wow. it, you know, I really felt like I hitched my horse to the, hitched my wagon to the right horse, you know. But yeah, so it started back then in acting school to answer your question. That's how I circled around to Cagney, became obsessed with his films, started reading about who he was as a person, and then had this dream to create a show about his life. Wow. I have so many questions I want to ask, so let me get Fire my away. together here. You know, um, so for our fans that uh, haven't seen the show yet, can you just give us an idea of the storyline? I mean, of course, we know it's about Cagney, but sure. can you give us a little yeah. overview? So, so um, the two main central themes of the show are sort of him sticking up for the little guy, and that includes himself and the people around him and his need for justice in that way. And you see that right for when he's in the worker scene and right. standing up for his friends who are all, we're all, all getting shortchanged mm -hmm. pay. And, and of course it has to do with Jack Warner, mm -hmm. uh, who was the head of Warner Brothers Studios, who gave him the opportunity. Um, but also, you know, in the early days, he was already a huge movie star and making no money. Mm -hmm. You know, he was still on his original contract and locked in. And he walked out at the height of his career in 1936 and had a year-long legal I battle. Give him and such credit oh, for. amazing! Yeah. And he came back, and that that is what started to break it down for everybody. So everybody was treated fairly. He wasn't just doing it for himself. So that's the, the sort of central theme. And then the other theme is his battle with his own persona, because of course he was known as the quintessential tough guy, mm -hmm. but he also was a song wanted to be known as a song and dance man and put something else into the world. So in our story. Um, we make up the fact that he and Jack Warner are backstage at the uh, SAG Awards. Mm -hmm. That is not a real thing, mm -hmm. 1978. But that scene that we created to get them in the room together mm -hmm. um, allows us to, them to sort of, you know, hash it out about the old days and then we flash back from there and we visit them backstage a few times throughout the show. But we, that was a device that we used, a theatrical license mm -hmm. to um, so, sort of a jumping off point for us. And then we go right back to his vaudeville days, oh, how he got into vaudeville, mm -hmm. and then uh, Broadway, mm -hmm. briefly touch on Broadway. And yeah. the true story about Broadway is that Al Jolson saw this play, Penny Arcade, that he was in and, and bought the rights, sold it to Warner Brothers, and said that you should have those two kids, mm -hmm. Joan Blondell and James Cagney, do their parts that they did on Broadway because they were so good in them. And that's how he got started. He went out to Hollywood to make, do the parts he had done on Broadway. Wouldn't that be a nice story? Hmm. <laughs> I could see doing that. Um, uh, and, then, and then make 63 films. Anyone? Um, and, uh, um, but that's how he got started in Hollywood. And then, you know, uh, they worked everyone, excuse me, they worked everyone, finish a movie at two in the morning and start another one at 7 a.m. the next day, you know? And he just became very tired of that. Mm -hmm. Not of the work, really, but of being not treated fairly mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he, on behalf of himself and the people who were being treated worse around him. Uh, so we do Hollywood and the, the climax of the show really uh, is the whole white heat sequence, mm -hmm. which is really, That's I think my great. favorite part, besides the, the tap dance of Bob Hope. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's so many parts. I love yeah. doing it all to be honest with you, but the white heat sequence and the intensity of that mm -hmm. and where we have Warner, and this is probably something we amplified for theatrical to sh you know, for a purpose. We have Warner sort of goading him into this, mm -hmm. you know, epic performance. Mm -hmm. Should have won the Oscar. Should have won the Oscar. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so that's, uh, that sort of builds and builds to the 11 o'clock number called Tough Guy, where he sort of, you know, comes to grips with the fact that this is what I put into the world and it's okay. You know, mm -hmm. it, I, it did actually accomplish something good. And you see that in his final monologue where he says, maybe it helped you get through the depression or the war, or the, you know, like he realizes mm -hmm. that even though he was known as a tough guy and did a lot of, you know, um, mostly tough guy parts, it still accomplished something great in the world. Yeah, it's yeah. Did. And I have to say, I found the play, it was funny, it was touching, the dancing, forget about it, the singing was wonderful. And, you know, going into the play, I just made the assumption that the songs would all be, I, I made sure, I didn't want to read anything in advance. Okay. I wanted to be yeah, totally good. surprised. So I just thought, okay, so the songs are going to be George M. Cohen. But yeah, no. that's not true. And I have it's to very tell small you, portion. I love the songs. Thank so you. So tell <clears throat> me about who wrote those songs. Thank oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's fun? Uh, so when I start writing this as a one-man show, that's, I'll just give you a quick evolution. Mm -hmm. One-man show, working on it myself, an actor, a working actor, but no experience really creating a musical on my own. Mm -hmm. Peter Cauley, who I'd done a play of his, very successful Canadian play, playwright, lives in L.A. I was out there doing Timon the Lion King for eight months. Mm -hmm. uh, 
invited him to the show because I'd done a play of his and met him in Canada. And uh, we started having lunch together and I was telling everyone, I'm, gonna, I'm making a show about Cagney, creating a show about Cagney. He said, well, maybe I can help. So we forged out a new storyline. He really helped me figure out these themes and what's theatrical about his life. And we wrote a four person musical uh, where I wrote nine uh, songs for that. There was some period music and then nine of my own compositions. We did a reading of that in 2007 for Florida Stage, a great theater that's no longer there, sadly, in Florida. And they loved the idea, wanted to help us develop it. Um, and they introduced us to our director, Bill Castellino, who was the best thing ever happened to us, smartest guy at developing musicals and honing stories. And Christopher McGovern, who had already known from years gone by in New York, who's a wonderful composer. And he sort of took the lead in the musical department. Because I knew some of my songs, I had great faith that some of my songs were totally what they needed to be. Good enough, told the story the way they should, should stay. And then others I knew were kind of a placeholder. I don't have a lot of experience in that area. That's not my main thing, although I love writing music. Um, so Chris took over and about two thirds of the score is his and about a third of it is mine, four songs in the it remained, the Fallen in the <laughs> song and <laughs> what so I call the long. legacy song, How Will I Be Remembered <laughs> and the travelogue and whatnot. But, so it's fun. Yeah. And, and whenever any of my Canadian mm -hmm. folk come, mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't lived there in 25 years, but uh, I mention all sorts of Canadian towns in the travelogue lyrics. So oh, they, they get big okay. laughs from Canadians when all they're right, here. So our Canadian fans out there, take note. <laughs> but it is an original score. And then of course we do a big USO, George M. Cohen medley mm -hmm. and both That's acts. Beautiful. And both acts end with a, a variation on, uh, I won't say what it is, because I want people to have a little surprise, but um, a Cohan music, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it was such a wonderful show. I, I, can, I cannot Thank recommend you. it enough. Thanks. Uh, everyone was wonderful. Um, the, it's a, the fun part is there's only six of us. Yes. And besides Bruce Sabbath, who plays Jack Warner, he plays one other small part and mm -hmm. two other parts, I guess. And I, I'm the only, as I say, I'm the only schmuck who plays one role. <laughs> Everybody else, then the other four. You're not pulling your weight then, huh? Exactly. And then the other four play multiple, multiple defined characters. Josh Walden plays the, the tough guy, you know, uh, thug in the, in the worker scene. And he plays my brother. That's sort of his home base character. And then he plays several different directors, a flamboyant director and a tough director. And then uh, Danette Holden plays Ma. Cagney and plays Jane Warner's secretary and then several other parts in between and then Ellen Zaletsi plays um, uh, plays my wife that's her home base character and plays Mae Clark which is a great part in the yeah. that scene we don't want to give that <laughs> away know that. and then uh, uh, Jeremy Benton originated the role of Bob Hope and for these three months right now he's on leave and we have Jeffrey Denman a wonderful Broadway uh, singer dancer actor who is uh, playing Bob Hope and many, many other parts, Eddie Woods, mm -hmm. you know, in the Public mm -hmm. Enemy sequence mm -hmm. and whatnot. And they all have to really sing. We all have to really sing, dance, and act. No one hides in the show. There's six of us, and everybody's a lead. There's, we're all leads in the show. You know, there's no ensemble, per se. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's just a real, it is an ensemble piece, right. because we're all, but, but everyone is a, is a star in their own right, you know? Yeah. Well, I know that we're running out of time, but I just cannot thank you enough. Oh, my it's pleasure. It's charming to talk with you. Thanks. It's great because I know the people who will be watching this are fans of old movies, oh. and I'm such a fan of old movies. And that's this creation sprung from a love of old movies and this guy, Cagney, who inspired me in those movies. So I hope, I hope they'll all come and see it. I hope so too, and yeah. I think they'll enjoy it. I know they'll enjoy it. Thank Good. you again so My much. My pleasure. I really appreciate it. Yeah, nice it. to meet you. Same Bring your mom again. I'll, oh, I'll meet I her will. next time. I That'll will. be good. <laughs> make her life. Good. <laughs> right, take care. Robert. Okay, thank thanks you. for chatting. A big thank you to Cagney the Musical and, of course, to Robert Creighton for spending time with us at the theater. If you want to buy tickets to see Cagney, please visit CagneyTheMusical.com and we're putting the information right here at the bottom of the screen for your convenience. Please, I strongly recommend you go see this show. It really is fabulous. It's a good time. And now we're going to leave you with a little something from Cagney to brighten up your day. This is Anne-Marie Gaddy for Classic Movies and More. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dad.